Uh, okay. Um, I haven't recorded a YouTube video of any kind in probably 10 years. I think it was two, I, it doesn't matter. Uh, my name is Spencer and uh, I feel like I have to make this video and like my hand has been forced uh, sort of in a way. Um, I have it written down over here on my screen. If the shot gets a little screwy, it's because my desktop computer doesn't have a webcam and I've duct taped my iPhone to the monitor so that I can use the front facing camera. Um, first, what prompted this video was the YouTube notification I got on my phone um, that Kyle Hill had made a video called Autism is My Superpower. This, and I, I can't stress this enough, was written in its entirety before I actually watched the video. I, it's, it's a very good video and I encourage people to watch it and I'll probably link it below. Um, it, this poured out of me over years of experiencing Autism Awareness Month and what inevitability it brings. And so that said, this is what I felt I had to write. Every Autism Awareness Month, they start. The Autism is my superpower videos. The problem is very few of them talk about the reality of living with autism. Um, so I feel like I have to speak up and have an obligation to do so because no one else seems to be willing to or um, cares about the nuance that is happening here. Um, I don't want to seem only overly critical or vicious or even ungrateful for the awareness that these videos raise. I just want to share a perspective I don't see shared very often. Um, I was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, specifically Asperger's, uh, in 2011 when I was 27. Uh, I'm 36 now. Uh, in those years, I've realized how little help there is for people like me. Uh, I was diagnosed very late because of so many misdiagnoses at a younger age, which is a very, very common problem that the superpower people don't talk about. Um, most just called me a juvenile delinquent and a behavior problem. This is common for people with disabilities in school. If you want to know more about this, research what's called the school to prison pipeline. Um, you'll find a lot of information about um, it. It happens to a lot of minorities, but it also very, very much happens to people with disabilities when you're in a school that just doesn't want to do what they should and are legally required to provide you with. Uh, they just don't want to do it. They don't want, they don't take time, the resources, so they just don't. Um, for more, inf yeah, for more information, look at the school to prison pipeline. I was abused by many adults and taken advantage of by those brought in supposedly to help me. Uh, ironically, the abuse I suffered at their hands is responsible for the help I actually received today. Um, I have to accept the reality that I am in fact lucky, uh, if you can call it that, um, that I was abused so badly because that's what's getting me assistance, not my autism at all. I tell you these things because there's a group of people we need to discuss, and I do mean discuss. I encourage you to leave a comment below. Uh, I call them Team Superpower, and they annoy me on just a real base level. Team Superpower makes blog posts and videos about how wonderful their lives are because of the autism that they have. They put a positive spin on it. They say, you know, well, you can choose to make it your superpower. No, there's no choice involved whatsoever. It's complete luck of the draw. Uh, they talk about thriving in school or because they have an encyclopedic memory or how they use their hyper-focus to succeed. They fail to mention the anxiety you experience when you can't control your hyper-focus or when you can't finish something that you get started and you can go into a complete meltdown, panic attack. Um, I have experienced that firsthand many times um, it's horrible when your focus is controlling you and not you controlling your focus. Um, this creates a false sense that we don't need assistance or support so much as acceptance and advocacy because we're not disabled so much as just different. 
Um, within the autism community, there is a saying, if you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. Uh, there are major clusters of symptoms we don't all have. Uh, we, some can be spun in a positive light, but many of them can't. There are also comorbid conditions, usually, and I do mean usually, uh, like nonverbal learning disorder, uh, dyscalculia, which is a learning disability with math. Uh, the easiest way to explain it to someone who's never experienced it is it's like color blindness, but with numbers. The, you can see the numbers, and you know you're supposed to do a arithmetic function, uh, multiplication, addition, whatever, and that part of your brain never kicks in. You just look at it and you go, I see the numbers, and I know what I'm supposed to do with them, but that part of my brain just doesn't ever fire. Uh, if you have a calculator, you can get around that. But you don't always have one, especially in school, and they tend to mock you for it. And by that I mean the teachers, not the students. Um, and you also get phys physical symptoms like gastrointestinal disorders. That's also incredibly common. Um, all of what I'm telling you has been verified with peer by peer-reviewed journals and scientific in the, within the scientific and medical community. With a little googling, you can find them. Some of them behind paywalls. You know, I can make a whole video on the awfulness of paywalls, but that's a different issue and a different thing. Uh, my personal symptom cluster includes executive function problems, uh, some memory issues, nonverbal learning disorder, as well as learning disabilities in math and dysgraphia. One of the reasons I'm reading this is because I know that there are people out there with nonverbal and will probably absorb this better if it's spoken, and I can't write it out because you won't be able to read my handwriting. Um, I do have some good characteristics, like an encyclopedic memory, but it's for a very sp focused and specific area. In my case, it's computers and technology, but for others, it could be My Little Pony. And seriously, I know a guy who that is his situation. Um, another thing our superpower friends tend to gloss over. they like, oh, you get this encyclopedic memory and you're just wonderful. Yeah, about one thing, and if luck of the draw happens to be that you've got something that can be used to make a career or is profitable, great. If it's My Little Pony, not so great. Um, I also can't read social cues worth a damn. <laughs> I, there's something coming, just hang on. Um, I also can't read social cues worth a damn, and that has a real world consequences. I'm not talking about awkwardness. I'm talking about safety. Um, in order to demonstrate this, I have to tell you something about me personally that I don't really share that often uh, for reasons that will become clear in a moment. Um, I'm gay. Um, whether you, whatever your feelings on that issue are, please set them aside for a minute. They they don't matter here. Um, I only bring this up because I need to tell you some need to tell you that to make the following point, and it's an example that involves. Uh, every Pride Month I see videos from the It Gets Better Project telling people that the more times, you know, they come out and the more people that they tell, the easier it gets. And this is true if you're neurotypical, but for the rest of us there needs to be a little star, a little asterisk next to that. Um, because for most of us um, who have autism spectrum disorders, uh, we don't read social cues very well. So I can't read the social cues and the subtext that tells me the person I'm conversing with is safe person to tell or not. Um, it's a complete blind leap of faith every time. Uh, it feels just as terrifying today as when I started telling people back in my late teens. Um, I can't tell if I'm gonna get a hug or a punch in the face. There's just complete, you have no idea. It's a complete blind leaf of faith. Did I mention I live in Texas? And I don't mean a major city like Austin or Dallas. It's an issue. Um, it's a very basic example that demonstrates the issue. What might be seen as a non-problem or a minor, minor occurrence to someone else that, you know, is a major problem to others. Some people say, oh, well, it's social awkwardness because you don't pick up on the symptoms. Sometimes it can be dangerous. Um, when I was in school, I struggled a lot because a phenomenon I couldn't explain. 
and there were many of them, but this is one. When I was in class, I could learn and retain information, but when I changed classes, it was very difficult to retain what I had just learned, and homework was a disaster. I could not remember what I had learned in class that day and when at home or in another classroom, but the next day I could remember most of it the minute I sat back down at my desk in class. None of the adults in my life would believe that this was true, so I was labeled as oppositional and defiant and put in adaptive behavior classes with the school's largest drug dealer and kids who would routinely fight and break things around you while you're trying to get your schoolwork done. Now, this is called, I know now, but there's a term, there's not a scientific term for this, but it's called difficulty remembering things out of context and is common with autism spectrum disorders slash Asperger's. Um, so is the other executive function problems that resulted in a messy room. You can sort of see some of it there. Uh, disorganized locker and my school binder was a disaster. I could tell you usually where most things were in there, but it was a bit of a mess. And if you tried to reorganize it, panic attack would, would happen. And um, that was not fun at all. Uh, panic attacks never are, but they did not, I could never explain to them why they couldn't organize it in a way that they had that made logical sense. It just felt wrong. And so, again, they just said I was being defiant. Um, the, and um, other executive problems, um, the homework I could not remember how to do, I used to hide in my locker um, at school because it was really embarrassing. You tell people, it's just humiliating. They think you're an idiot or they think you're being a jerk. Um, one day, my mother, uh, they called my mother to the school and they went through my locker. And I had been lying about my homework and trying to survive an increasingly intensifying and horrible situation at school. Um, a little bit of context, this is right when my parents were divorcing. Uh, second thing, I was a socially awkward kid who was bullied a lot. And this was six weeks after Columbine. And rather than address the fact that, hey, bullying's a problem, no, no, they made all of us feel like we were about to snap and murder everybody in the building. Uh, and so we were all very, very intently watched, even though I wanted nothing to do with anybody else because I'm an introvert. Um, I had been... Um, when they showed her what I had been hiding, they used as justification to isolate me from all after-school activities uh, and my friends and put me in isolation. Um, and that's an actual term. That's not, oh, they isolated me, no. What I mean is they put me in a four by six foot windowless room with magnetically sealed doors. Um, when they demo it to parents, they say that it's only used in, you know, for really, really violent kids outburst and it's an emergency and that the door lock actually you have to stand there and hold the button down with your hand to keep it to lock and so they go oh great and then they leave and then they break out the duct tape and just tape the button down um when parents oh uh, yeah they just isolation rooms are still used in the state of texas and in other states today um so just know that if your kid says they've been locked in a tiny room all day, um, they have been. It's not a lie. Uh, I didn't receive an education. Everything I know today is the result of the learning I did on my own. Um, when you're put in those classes, they don't give you the mainstream curriculum. They just give you busy work. And it's profitable for the school because your test results are exempt. Uh, you don't take the standardized tests. So it doesn't matter how far behind you get because it doesn't show up statistically for the school. Um, I could create an entire video on the horrors I went through in school, including the several times I was screened for learning disabilities and autism spectrum disorder, and the results of these tests never made it into my school file or came up at any parent, teacher, or ARD meetings ever. Uh, if you have a kid in school, please, please know the school is not your friend and they may be flat out lying to you. Um, so no, I did not thrive in school as so many on Team Superpower would have you believe. 
Uh, the truth is there's very little support past the age of 18. It's called aging out and can be researched in depth online. I can't remember, I think it was either, I think it was 60 Minutes or 2020 that did a thing on it uh, a few years ago. Uh, the two biggest organizations in the world of autism are Autism Speaks and ASAN, AKA the Autism Self Advocacy Network. Autism Speaks spends most of its money trying to cure autism and on catering to parents of children with autism. Very little actually makes it to the person with autism. And this is in my opinion, but I am not the only one with this opinion. And there is plenty, plenty of it written online. Um, the other side of this coin is ASAN, um, on the other hand, chooses to see us as differently abled <laughs> um, and seeks to provide more advocacy. This also doesn't really help people like me very much because the truth of it is more nuanced. But nuance doesn't rake in millions for a 5013C charity. Catchy, we're differently able, send us money and we'll keep giving you hope, uh, does. Autism is very hard to diagnose, as those of us who survive have learned <clears throat> well, uh, have, have learned it well by adulthood. Um, we, we learn to hide our symptoms. We don't even know what it is, without, we, we don't really realize what it is that we're hiding. Um, we just learn to cope. Um, for example, um, I have trouble making eye contact. Well, very long ago, I learned that if I just stare at someone right here, it, or right here, it's close enough to their eyes that from a distance, you can't tell that I'm making, I'm not making eye contact with you. I'm staring at your forehead, but you don't know that because you're like five, six feet away. When you get really close, then I start messing with my phone or sort of distracting the fact that I can't look you in the face. And it's very difficult. Now, of course, right now I'm looking at a camera or my phone, so it may, I'm not looking you in the face. Um, it's the, the miracle of Zoom uh, during a pandemic um, has made things better a lot. Sorry, everybody who is sick. Um, whether, yeah. Anyway, a perfect example of the complexity here is that the son of a man by the name of Tony Atwood, who is literally the world's foremost expert on Asperger syndrome. He literally wrote the book that everybody else goes by. He's done amazing work in this area. Uh, he's the world's foremost expert. Uh, and Asperger syndrome has now been folded under autism. Whether or not that's a good thing is another debate for a lot of other people. Um, so I'm not going to get into it. Um, Tony failed to realize that his own son had the disorder until years later after he'd been plagued with problems his entire life and even went to prison. Um, he didn't realize it until later. It's really, really hard to di diagnose and, and notice, uh, even if, uh, you're an expert. Many of us have fallen victim to depression and self-harm. Uh, if you want proof of this, the Asperger subreddit on Reddit in the sidebar um, is it's such a hopeful and cheery place. They have had to ban discussion of, of physician-assisted suicide because it was such a popular topic for a long time. Uh, again, the fact that I'm still here makes me one of the lucky ones. Uh, in conclusion, I'm asking begging you caped crusaders of team superpower to realize just how lucky you are. Um, please, please stop with the toxic positivity. It doesn't help us. Please, please, people of the world, this Autism Awareness Month, can we raise some actual awareness this time? A more nuanced discussion would be great. Um, if you want an example of a uh, good uh, one of those videos, uh, Kyle Hill did a really uh, a nice one. Um, and like I said, uh, sort of triggered this, but it, it, he, I, I saw it, it's really well done. And he really gives a nuanced sort of view. Um, anyway, that's uh, all I have to say. Um, sorry it ran long, but, um, I don't think I'll do this again, but, um, thanks.